Hi folks, my website is jasonburnspreacher.com and we're going to be looking at Paul Williams and uh, critique what he has to say about Christianity. Paul Williams is a, a Muslim apologist. So let's see what he has to say. The spirit is the word of Allah. Like, yes. The spirit is, is like Isa or Jibril. This is the word of Allah, meaning, but this is mean that they, 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 they convey the message. But it's different. The Holy Spirit is not like the Holy Spirit is God, God is a spirit. We believe God creates the spirits. We don't believe God is a spirit. Like in Islam, we don't speak about God unless there's a text that precedes us. Exactly. And the problem is, is that the Christians have gone for way too much for like they, we we take we as Muslims we do, we're wasat yeah we take the middle path yeah so the whole thing is is that we ask a lot every day to show us the straight path yeah we we take the middle path so, look so Paul, what would you say about the whole thing regarding the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit in, in, in Christianity? Well, the Holy Spirit <clears throat> is is the third person of the Trinity. Um, so there's confusion here about language. Uh, the Holy the Holy Spirit in, in uh, is the age of Gabriel uh, in Islam, but that's just coincidence of language, I think. But I, I uh, although I agree with the brother says there are other, there are other. Well, wait a minute. Let's look at what Jesus says. It's very very clear about the Holy Spirit here. So let, let let's just look at. Um, Uh, John chapter 14 verse 15 if you love me you will keep me com keep my commandments and I will ask the father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever even the spirit of truth that the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him you know him for he dwells with you and he will be with you will be in you so the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity Father Son and Holy Spirit and he is there, the helper. He is there uh, to dwell in us, to to open our eyes spiritually, to change us, uh, and to be more uh, like um, of the character of of Jesus. So, you know. So for the Muslim to say that that the Holy Spirit is an angel, you know, I would say that's schizophrenic theology and doesn't make any sense logically speaking. Christians, uh, Catholics, for example who constitute the largest church in the world who, who don't automatically believe you go to paradise if you're okay. Christian they do believe in purgatory okay. that's still the Catholic doctrine so they, there is particularly in his medieval understanding the idea that purgatory is a place of punishment but it, it's, it's remedial punishment so the idea is ultimately you'll graduate into heaven um, no serious sinners who are destined for hell go to purgatory only those who are going to paradise or heaven will go to purgatory okay. uh, and if you read say the great work by uh, Dante uh, the Divine Comedy. Uh, there's hell, there's heaven, and there's uh, paradise. Was he a Christian, yeah? Yeah, but he, yeah, Dante was the great the seven, seven. Uh, Florentine uh, writer in Renaissance Italy, and he wrote one of the great works of Western literature called The Divine Comedy. When I say comedy, it's not much funny about it, it's just a, an archaic term. But um, I've read Hell, and it's uh, it's pretty amazing. And then you, and you go on to Purgatory, and then afterwards you go to, to, to Heaven. And it's populated. Hell particularly is full of popes and, and other people who did bad things. And, you know, you got it anyway. I don't know that. Uh, so, cause, cause, cause. Yeah, and, and actually some of the Muslims are, are not in Hell. They're in Limbo, so like Avicenna, as he calls them. You know, so some of the completely Islamic philosophers uh, are, are there. Yeah. He, he's not in Hell. Uh, He's in, well, he's in something called Limbo. This is going into a different subject now, but it's right. neither heaven nor hell because because they didn't know Jesus. But anyway, that's another subject. Yeah. But um, so Catholics particularly don't have this arrogant spiritual belief that uh, oh, I've got my passport okay. to heaven. It doesn't matter about what I do. Uh, they, they don't think like that. Okay. And only the saints really go straight to paradise. Uh, the rest of us, the rest of the rank and file Catholics, probably get end up in purgatory where they'd be purified 
of their sin. And this actually, in my opinion, is remarkably similar to what will happen to most of us as Muslims. Yeah. You don't, uh, for us, we may well go through a period of punishment or purification before we yeah. enter paradise. Yeah. If we need to have sins burnt off. So actually, there's a similarity, if not formally, but in 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 the in the rationale, which in Catholic purgatory and what happens to many Muslims, because all Muslims will go to paradise ultimately, well, but not all will go straight. The there. Of sins, then? Sorry. So. How does that make all that Christians say that Jesus died to save your sins? What do you mean? Because Christians say that Jesus died to save yeah, your yeah, sins. Yeah, we hear at that park all the time yeah, yeah. and so forth. So how does it... Well, they, they, they still... They mean you can't go to paradise. They can't believe when you're baptised as a baby, you, you are regenerated. You become a, a child of God. And at that point onwards, you're ultimately going to go to paradise. But um, even if you have to spend time in purgatory. But it's, they, they still believe baptism... It is uh, regenerates you by the blood of Jesus, or what you know Jesus has required for you on the cross and all that. It's all through the cross uh, uh, for them. Um, but the funny thing is, it's not what Jesus taught. If you look at the earliest gospels, um, he, he was uh, the message he actually taught is the religion of Jesus, as opposed to the religion about Jesus, which is mm. what Christianity is. The religion about him, the religion of Jesus, what he preached is quite different. Uh, and you can see this even in the Christian Bible, the earliest gospels. When he talked about how we're saved, how we get to heaven, and so we'll come back to that in a minute. But he was talking about purgatory, and then he was saying it's similar to to Islam. Uh, number one, purgatory uh, is not a, a biblical concept. So the Catholics allowed tradition to get in rather than actually what the Bible teaches. If you go to the Bible. If you go to Ephesians chapter two, it go verse eight. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing; it is the gift of God. Jesus said as he was dying to the thief on the cross, he said, today you will be with me in paradise because one of them believed in him. So it's this faith in Jesus that saves you. And if you don't believe in Jesus, even in that great passage in John 3.16, if you look at John 3.16, in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So if you believe in Christ, you have eternal life. But then it goes, verse 17. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. So there it's quite clear there's no purgatory. You either believe Jesus now and you're saved. If you don't believe him, you're not saved. Now, he says that, Paul says, that Jesus didn't teach this. So let's just listen a bit more. Virtually all of it is Islamic. It's quite extraordinary. Uh, what Christians follow is not his teaching. They follow this idea of his dying, death on the cross, uh, and rising again from the dead on the third day. They believe that is what saves. You read Jesus, a man came to Jesus in Mark, Gospel, Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, yeah. and said to him, Good teacher, what must I do to be saved? Is the, what did Jesus say? Did he say... Or believe in my death and resurrection for sin and you're going to be no he didn't say any of that he said to the man who said to him good teacher what must i do he said why do you call me good this is in mark good. chapter 10 there is no one good but god alone so he denies he's god and then he says to the guy obey the commandments these are like the jewish commandments so uh, mark chapter 10 we'll deal with that in a minute but he, he did talk about uh infant baptism and uh, christians believe in infant baptism saves uh, he's talking there in the context of uh, Catholics. In in the context of Protestantism, uh, there are different concepts. There's covenant theology that believes in infant baptism, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be saved. Um, in, in terms of like when you when you're growing up, there comes a point as you're growing up that you've got to come to a point yourself to make that decision. Um, so there's covenant theology, and then there's Baptist theology where you. It, there's no infant baptism, it's dedication and you have um, uh, adult baptism. So on the area of um, on infant baptism, he's completely just talking about one, one, one group, Christian group, uh, what, uh, the Catholics, rather than looking at Protestant theology there. So I'll just uh, rewind it back just a minute. We'll go on this uh, Mark chapter 10 because it's important. And he brings this up quite a lot, so let, let's just look at this. There is no one good but God alone. So he denies he's God. And then he says to the guy, obey the commandments. These are like the Jewish commandments. 
the guy's a Jew, and he's telling a Jew to obey the law. No surprise there. And the guy says, I've obeyed all those since I was a youth. And Mark then writes, Jesus looked at him, loved him, and says, you lack one thing. You're thinking, well, what's the one thing he lacks? Surely putting his trust in Jesus as Saviour and Lord, or trusting in his resurrection from the dead, or baptism, or whatever. No, Jesus says the one thing he lacked is to give his money to the poor, his wealth to the poor, and then he will have treasure in heaven. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now let me ask, does that gospel message more closely resemble Islamic teaching, or what today is called Christian teaching? So let's look at the passage in Mark chapter 10. So he says that Jesus doesn't talk about his death and, and resurrection. So let's look at Mark chapter 10 verse 17. And as he was sitting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. So what is what the, what the Lord is saying there is, you know, don't be flattering me. Don't be giving me false flattery. He's not saying he's not God. He says, you know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honour your father and mother. And he said to him, teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus said, look at him and loved him and said to him, you like one thing, go sell all that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. So there, number one there, Jesus knows the man's heart. Only God knows our hearts. So Jesus knows the man's heart. And number two, <coughs> he commands him, come follow me. Not follow God, but follow me. Anyway, verse 22, disheartened by saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? And Jesus looked to them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things possible with God. So there, the Lord's saying, Look, it's, you cannot be saved by your own ability. It's only by God. His power and provision. Peter began to say, See, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brother or sister or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in, in time past. So, so there, the Lord is saying, Look, your loyalty to me will be rewarded. But that is beyond a prophet. He's saying, he, he, He's He's taking the loyalty that you have for God. He's taking it for himself. So this passage does not justify uh, Paul Williams saying that it's Islamic. It's nowhere near Islamic. The Lord's talking about the Ten Commandments. Sharia law is not about the Ten Commandments. Sharia law is, is about going back to the cer ceremonial law of Israel. So that's not, you know, so this is a... Uh, so you know, there's nothing to do with Islamic teaching there with the Ten Commandments. Then the Lord is saying, follow me. He's saying, only God can save you. That is not Islamic teaching. So now, notice now though, this is the really interesting bit. After verse 31, Paul Williams said that Jesus doesn't teach his death and resurrection. Now look, verse 32. Paul Williams has missed out this. He's, he doesn't want you to look at this. And this is right under the passage that he's quoting. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus walked ahead of them, and they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, are you going to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and deliver him over to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and spit on him, and flog and kill him, and after three days he will rise. So Paul Williams is lying to you and he is not telling you the truth right under the passage that he was talking about is about the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So what Paul Williams is doing is eisegesis, not exegesis. I would, I would suggest the natural successor to that in purely human terms, that is, is Islam. Yeah. 
because in Islam we do not believe we have an intermediary between us and God. We do not believe that a man has to be horribly tortured to death before his past sins are forgiven. We do not believe any of that. We believe that God requires that we behave righteously and that we have faith in him. But he already admitted that that's not enough, that you're going to go to a purgatory where you're going to get purged. So you never... And, and then he's going to say... He's saying that... He, in one breath, he said in this video that all Muslims are, are, are going to get to heaven. Well, it's to me it sounds a bit arbitrary. It sounds a bit um, contradictory. Uh, one minute you, 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 you're dependent on the mercy of Allah... But where's the justice? There's no, there's no justice there. Where's the judgment? If you're going to be judged, but yet you're going to all get into heaven, where is the justice? It, there, there doesn't seem to be any justice in. It seems to be a bit arbitrary. Where it, you know, the it, it just seems like God is a a God who who just uh, at the end of the day is just weak and frail and fragile who's just going to let everybody into heaven no matter what just go to purgatory and purify your sins and then you'll get in there's no righteousness and justice there where God will actually judge and will actually say no you've not made it because you, 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 you've not, you, you, you've not trusted in me and you've not obeyed me um, whereas what his teaching is or Paul Williams and the Islamic people here it's kind of like, well, you're going to get in no matter what. Uh, very appealing to the human flesh. But, you know, Jesus says, you know, you, you didn't feed the poor, you didn't help the weak. You know, depart from me, I never knew you. So there's judgment there. And Jesus said, he that believes in me will have life. And if you don't believe in him, you won't have life. So there is a, a, a parting of the ways when we die. We're either going to be in hell or heaven. And it all depends on whether we believe in Jesus and follow him. There's no purgatory. There's no second chance. And it's not based on arbitrariness where where this God is fickle and just lets everybody in. And there's no justice. It's based on pure righteousness and justice where God will be fair with every human being. So we've looked at the second uh, part of the series and we're going to look at another video now. And we're going to uh, critique that. And I hope this series will be a help to you. Don't forget my own website, jasonburnspreacher.com. You can get me on Twitter and Facebook. But also don't forget to go to, go to Digital Dawa and, and to, to, to go to them. This is their video. And I'm paying respect to, to the work that they've done. But uh, this is fair use. I'm, I'm doing a critical analysis of what they say. And I hope they and you appreciate that. Thank you for listening. And God bless you.